Hi there, I'm Matthew Jackson and I'm here to introduce game theory to you. I'm a professor at Stanford University and I first got interested in game theory when I was quite young because I've always been interested in mathematics and, and game theory grows naturally out of mathematics. It's a system of understanding logic and how people interact. And it's become something which I use almost every day. As a social scientist, it helps us organize how we think about people interacting. And actually, just to give you an example, one of the recent areas I've been doing research with the student Stephen Nye here at Stanford is in understanding war. So trying to understand wh when is it that countries have incentives to go to war with each other. And one of the remarkable things that's been happening over time is over the past 200 years, wars have decreased dramatically. And at the same time, world trade has been increasing. And so we try and understand how is it that patterns of world international trade give countries incentives to go to war with each other or to stay at peace. And how can the world become more peaceful? So that's one example. And, and part of what we really use game theory for is trying to understand how people interact with each other. So if I'm uh, trying to, to do something, how do I anticipate what another player is going to do? So a classic example of that is a game I'm sure when you think of games you're quite familiar with, Matching Pennies. So when we play Matching Pennies, you, you begin to see something very interesting. In Matching Pennies, you want to be unpredictable, right? Being predictable puts you at a disadvantage. So it's a game where there's natural randomization, where you have to be thinking about what your opponent might be doing and also thinking about how they might be reacting to what you're doing. And you, I'm sure you've seen many games like this. So have you ever seen people take penalty kicks in soccer? The goalkeeper has to decide whether to go left or right. And the kicker has to decide to, whether to kick to the right or the left. And if the goalkeeper always goes to the left, then the, the kicker can know that. And that can give them a winning strategy. So the goal, goalkeeper has to be unpredictable. The kicker has to be unpredictable. These are games where, where chance is important and understanding how the other person is going to act is important. We see this in all kinds of interesting applications. So game theory has been used in biology to study predators and prey. So when a cheetah is running to catch its, its prey, does the prey move right or left? Does it accelerate? Does it hide in the bushes? So these are natural strategies that animals play. But a lot of the games that we come to, to really love and to, to really enjoy are games that are fairly complicated but have really uh, well understood rules. So they're very simple to describe, but yet they're very rich. So a game like chess is a game like this. So if you look at people playing chess, you really have to think very carefully about what your opponent's going to do. So if I move my queen in a certain place, how are they going to react to it? How are they going to, what, what are they going to do next? Game theory actually tells us something remarkable about chess. Um, chess has a solution. It's just that it's so complicated we can't actually figure it out as humans. So there is a, a, an optimal way to play chess. Um, but there's many other games that we learn to play, and we play these games all the time because they're new, they're interesting, and uh, using game theory has become very important in designing all kinds of systems that we, we use in, in our everyday lives. So, for instance, trying to figure out how do we get countries to limit their production of carbon emissions, and how do we control pollution along the, the world. Well, people are, are making choices, and those choices interact with other people and we have to give them incentives to do things. And that's, game theory is a great tool in designing those kinds of systems. Um, doing things like trying to figure out how to design systems for exchanging kidneys, um, that's something that is very valuable in saving lives and is very important and very simple in terms of the, the ways in which we can apply game theory. Games are great, um, you'll have fun with them, it, playing them, learning about them, learning to figure out how other people are going to behave, predicting how other people are going to behave, becoming unpredictable yourself. These are all elements of game theory. So let's take a look at another game. Okay, let's play some tic-tac-toe. Okay. Do you want to go first? Sure. Um... Where should I go now? <laughs> 